are low future chartered accountant C. Dubair Khan this side. I hope you are doing well. Welcome to CA Intermediate Advanced Accounting Regular Batch. I am CA Dubair Khan. Doing teaching from last 10 years. In addition to chartered accountancy, I have also done the diploma in IFRS from ACCA and India's examination which is conducted for members by ICAI. So, here first we will discuss about the syllabus, what will be the approach of these batch and what you can expect from these batch. From these batch, I assure you that if you follow my instruction easily, you can score 70 plus in advanced accounting. Even if you have coming from graduation route or from a foundation route, whatever route you are coming, if you follow my instruction easily, you can score 70 plus in accounting subject. And in your group one, you have three papers and believe me, this advanced accounting is a very scoring subject. You can score, if you score very good marks in advanced accounting, 75 plus, 80 plus in advanced accounting. So for the other subject, I hope you score very good marks in other subject also. But if you score in any one subject 75 plus 80 plus, so I think account is that subject in which you can easily score 75 plus 80 plus. If you score 75 or 80 plus in advanced accounting, so it will be easy for you for the aggregate marks. You know that for three subject aggregate marks require 150, 100 marks paper, three paper individually for to pass examination in individual paper, you have to score 40 marks in each paper. An aggregate it should be 50 percent. So in group one you have 300 marks for three paper, 100 marks, 100 marks, and 100 marks. Individually you have to score at least 40 marks, but aggregate it should be 50. So if you score 75 plus and 80 plus in advanced accounting, so out of 300 the aggregate should be 150. It is very easy to clear your group one. And in fact in both the group you should have at least one subject where you can in which you can score 75 plus marks so let's start about the syllabus of your advanced accounting so today is our day 1 okay day 1 day 1 okay day 1 so don't write anything, just listen carefully. You don't have to write anything. I will tell you when you have to write, I will tell you. Don't worry. I will discuss about each and everything about the syllabus, about the study material and how we are going to approach and what about the tests or what our practice portion, what about the revision, each and everything I will discuss about it. Okay. So, you don't have to write it, just listen me. So, your paper one, your paper one, that paper one, advanced accounting. Paper 1, Advanced Accounting, Paper 1, Advanced Accounting, it will be for how many marks? It will come for 100 marks. Okay. So, your syllabus is divided into two parts. One part is related to company accounts company accounts and few other chapters okay so company accounts another and second part is related to accounting standards accounting standards so here in your first part that is company's account you have total six chapters how many chapters you have total six chapters company's account and others First chapter is buyback of securities. Second, financial statement of financial statement of company. You don't have to write, just listen to me. You don't have to write. Okay. Financial statement of company. Third, Amalgamation, amalgamation of companies. Fourth, internal reconstruction, internal reconstruction, 
कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट एंड लास्ट वन इज ब्रांच अकाउंट सो यू हैव सिक्स चैप्टर हियर इन कंपनीज अकाउंट एंड अदर एंड सेकेंड पार्ट इज रिलेटेड टू अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड सो टोटल अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड ट्वेंटी नाइन बट आउट ऑफ ट्वेंटी नाइन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड टू अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड has been abolished so how many effective accounting standard you have you have 27 accounting standards so here we will cover here 27 accounting standards and in addition to that there will be a chapter on introduction introduction to accounting standards introduction to accounting standard and one chapter will be on framework framework and then accounting standards so total accounting standards how many accounting standard total is from 1 to 29 but out of 29 two accounting standard has been abolished so accounting standard 6 and accounting standard 8 so it is abolished so how many effective accounting standard you have You have effective twenty-seven accounting standards. How many accounting standard you have? Twenty-seven accounting standard. Okay. So here, first part is related to company's account, and second another and other part is related to accounting standard. So if in in examination, if I say expected is, it is not any clarification from ICI, but it is expected that they will ask you around. 40 to 45 marks you can say they will ask you on company's account and other part and 50 to 55 marks okay 50 to 55 marks fifty to fifty five marks on accounting standard okay fifty to fifty five marks on accounting standard so anything is not issued by icci that what will be the pattern here but expected 40 to 45 marks or you can say here 40 or you can say 55 to 60 marks here on accounting standard they mark because as per new syllabus now as per new syllabus now as per new syllabus all the accounting standard is part of your syllabus now okay so more weightage i think is on accounting standard And here in companies account, so many chapter has been shifted to CA foundation. Now, as per in your new syllabus, so many chapters of your CA intermediate they have either they have removed from the syllabus or they have shifted to at CA foundation level. Okay, so you will get you will get two books. Okay, how many books you will get? You will get two books. I will discuss about it. But one book if one book is on companies account, I will discuss about another book is on accounting standard. so very important point here what will be the approach here in our batch what will be the approach here Re remember the in your study material how many source of you have for question if i say about the question so here here you have you may have some questions on you may have source if i talk about the source the source of a previous examination questions you have the ic study material questions you have okay just let me talk about for study material okay study material you will get two books of account uh, two books you will get how many books two books the first book is related to company's account another this is the first book and second book is related to accounting standard so how many books you will get you will get two books the first book is on company accounts and other and second book is on accounting standard second book is on accounting standard okay second book is on accounting standard now if i talk about the questions from where the institute can select the question what are the sources of question so sources of question if i say then it may be a previous examination questions 
प्रीवियस एग्जामिनेशन क्वेश्चन और रिविजन टेस्ट पेपर वट इज दिस रिविजन टेस्ट पेपर इट इज वी कॉल इट आर टी पी आर टी पी इफ यूर आफ्टर यूर यूर डूइंग सी इंटरमीडिएट इफ आफ्टर सी ए फाउंडेशन देन यू नो अबाउट इट वॉट इज आर टी पी इफ यूर आफ्टर ग्रेजुएशन इफ यू आर डूइंग सो वट इज दिस आर टी पी इन एवरी अटेम्प्ट इंस्टीट्यूट अटेम्प्ट ऑन इन मे एंड नवंबर सो इन एवरी अटेम्प्ट सी इंस्टीट्यूट issue revision test paper we call it rtp so they give question chapter wise for practice for revision so that is rtp so we can see some previous examination questions first so second is the rtp revision test paper and very important ici study material ici study material and fourth one is some other questions also some other questions there is a one more on mock test paper also okay so before the other questions mock test paper mock test paper we call it mtp and some other questions some other questions so here in your book all the previous examination questions covered revision test paper questions covered ICA study material, latest study material which is for new syllabus. All the hundred percent questions are already covered in the material which is provided to you. That is of company's account and for advanced accounting. Here then mock test paper, mock test paper questions are already covered here and other questions, some advanced questions are also covered in your in your material which is provided to you. So it means that you don't have to need any other book. You no need to refer any other book. Re very important. no need to refer no need to refer any other book no need to refer any other book why because all the previous examination question rtp revision test paper mock test paper ic study material question and other question are already covered in your study material so there is no need to refer any other book okay so now apart from the study material so what happened what will be the approach how you can score 75 plus in account believe me even though if you are doing this ca intermediate after graduation or after foundation you can easily score 75 plus in accounting subject and your target should be at least 75 plus in account passing per percentage individually it may be 40 for ici but for you the passing percentage the passing marks for advanced accounting is not 40 mark for you it is 75 at least or you can say 80 marks is your passing per so set the target for 80 plus in accounting subject how can you score 80 plus in advanced accounting subject we'll discuss about the paper pattern as well but how can you score 80 plus in advanced accounting okay so here your target should be your target should be 75 or 80 plus in accounts it should be at least 75 and you can score it better you can score it how you can score it listen what will be approach here when we start the regular when you start the chapters here so what will be approach in each every chapter first first in every class in every chapter first i will start with concept builder what do you mean by concept builder in every chapter first we will discuss about the concept of chapter first we will discuss about the concept of chapter in detail we will discuss about the concept and then i will solve question okay and here when i solve question we call it class question what we call we call it class question so i will solve questions in class in addition to that every day first we will discuss about the concept in every chapter then i will solve questions in class and every day i will give you questions for practice that is homework so practice question i will give you practice questions okay 
and after the completion of every chapter we will do a revision what we will do we will do revision of every chapter and after that you have to give test individually for every chapter so after every chapter what you will give you will give the test if you follow this process believe me believe me you can score 75 plus 80 plus in accounts so first you have to focus on concept every chapter when we start you have to focus and every chapter very important so the most important lecture is the first lecture of every chapter very important lecture first lecture of every chapter why because in that lecture i will discuss about the concept the first is the concept builder i will discuss about the concept each and everything will discuss about it then we will solve question in class so every day i will solve question and i will give you every day questions for practice so practice questions and then after the completion of every chapter we will do the revision we will do the revision of that chapter and then you have to appear for test so this will be the process if you follow this process you can easily score 75 or 80 plus in accounting now very important next part is you now this will be the approach this will be the approach and here in class question same here in class question or in practice question you will see the previous examination question revision test paper ICA study material mock test paper and other question you will see all these question in class question and in practice question now it may happen that you, you may have doubts on how we are going to solve your doubt if the doubts come so what happens if you subscribe for this batch you will get a link of telegram channel that that telegram channel is that telegram is specifically for those students who subscribe for this batch so if you subscribe for this regular batch so you will get a telegram group link you join that link at uh, that join that group and you can post your doubts there there are other students also i will be there i will reply to your doubts there second in book you can see there on the first page you can see there the number is given there this is a whatsapp number this is my whatsapp number and this is for doubts only so if you have any doubt you can whatsapp on these or uh, whatsapp on this number okay so join the telegram group but who can join those telegram group only those who subscribe for this batch second you can whatsapp me but i prefer to post on that telegram group because there are other students also there i will be there also so i will give you the answer of your questions there and every week i conduct a zoom session where we discuss about the test paper if a student any query any doubt any guidance if they want they can discuss with me in that zoom meeting so in every week i conduct a zoom meeting so you can join where i share the link of that zoom meeting in that telegram group only which is exclusively for your batch only so you can ask me your doubts there in telegram you can ask me that in zoom session you can ask me your doubts you can discuss anything and you can whatsapp me on this number if you if you're in doubt you can also post on that telegram group so here we will follow this approach and uh, and most probably doubts will not come because when i discuss the concept i discuss in so detail and will solve so many questions i will give in practice question as well if doubts come you can ask through the telegram through the zoom session or you can whatsapp me okay now after this what will be the pattern you know that in your new syllabus in you in your new syllabus pattern okay so in your new syllabus the pattern is first 30 marks is objective based so 30 marks 30 marks is objective based so in examination in your new syllabus the 30 marks will be the mcqs okay so mcqs will come for 30 marks so what kind of mcqs will come in examination you don't have to worry because institute what type of mcqs they will give they will give a para in the situation they will give you okay abc and company what they will give you the situation there and on the basis of that para they will ask you four or five mcqs so like that the total mcq different different question for mcq total mcqs will be how many 30 marks but this mcq may be on it, it is combination of both it will be on company's account as well as on accounting standard so here your 
pattern of the 30 marks objective question it will be this objective question will be on company's account and accounting standard as well and remaining 70 marks will be subjective will be subjective you have to solve full questions full questions here okay so 30 marks will be the mcq base and remaining 70 will be the subjective base okay so this is about your this is about your new syllabus uh, paper uh, paper pattern and your syllabus a company's account and other you have six chapter accounting standard you have so many chapters but and and in study material there are two books will be provided to you company's account and others and accounting standard you don't have to need any you don't have to refer any other book because all the question of the previous examination question rtp mock this paper ic study metal and other question each and everything is already covered in your notes so you don't have to need refer any other book if you want you can refer ic study material you observe that all the question of ic study button is already covered in your book so you don't have to need refer any other book and your target should be 75 plus 80 plus in account and you can score that much of mark if you follow this process three things is very important first is attend reg watch regular one lecture regular watch one lecture you have to maintain discipline or what you can do you can watch lecture from monday to friday on every saturday you can do the revision whatever we have covered from monday to friday you can do the revision on every saturday and then every Sunday you have to appear for test. You have to appear for test or for test also. Then we have a Zoom session where I discuss the test paper with student one to one. So we have a Zoom session also for this test paper discussion also. Okay. So first watch the lectures regularly. Not if you if you are comfortable to watch from Monday to Saturday, it's okay. You can also watch from Monday to Friday, five days. If you have not enough time. Uh, to prepare for the examination you can watch from monday to saturday but i suggest watch from monday to friday and what you can do that on every saturday do the revision what, whatever we have covered from monday to friday and then appear for the examination test paper on every sunday so this should be the approach attain the regular do the homework do the homework and when i give the homework uh, practice question for homework i discuss it before i discuss it before and what happened is that i mean you will see this book so what happened in here in this book first I will discuss in every chapter. For example, first chapter is buyback of securities. So in this chapter, first I will discuss about the concept, all the concept of buyback of security we will discuss here. And here the class questions, class question, C1 series is for class question. So that I will solve in class. And, um, and we have also the practice question, the practice question. And this practice question, you have to solve it. Now, what will be the approach here? So there are three things here. First is the concept builder, class question and practice question. So what happened here? This concept builder, I will discuss in class. I will write it down. If you are comfortable, you can write it with me, this concept builder. This space is given already in your study material, which is provided by BB Virtuals to you. So you can write it with me. But after the completion of every chapter, after the completion of every chapter, I share this concept builder PDF with the student. You get the Google Drive link. In that Google Drive link, you will see the one folder is one concept builder say so in concept builder after the completion of every chapter i share this concept builder my handwritten concept builder i will share their pdf if you're comfortable with to write it with me you can write it with me or alternatively you can just listen to me when i write it down concept builder or just focus just focus on it on the concept but i suggest to you if you write it with me, the space is given the study material which is provided to you by BB Virtual. The space is given there for the concept builder to write it down the concept builder. And I strongly suggest to you, write down the concept builder with me. What happened? Why I am saying to you, you have to write it down concept builder with me? Because that will help you to retain the point. So you have to, if it is if it is good, if you write it down the concept, when I write it in the concept, you have to write it down with me. And I will solve the question in class, class question. And when I give you the practice question before, if it is exactly the similar question, so I just give any homework. But if there are some new adjustment in practice question, first I discuss those questions in class only. And then I give you those, those practice questions for homework. Now what happened intentionally, intentionally here, if you see the practice question, you can see the suppose for example, practice question number one. You will see there here in practice question number one, after that P, series of P is for practice question. Series of C is for class question. So you can see here the P2. You can see here P2. So there is no, you can see a P2. So there is no solution. Solution is not given for the practice question number one. Now you will say, sir, how 
and we, how you are going to check the answer of your practice question. So what happened here? The Google Drive link which is provided to you, here you will see a one folder for the solution of practice question. Why intentionally the solution of practice question is provided in PDF form? Intentionally the solution of uh, this practice question is provided in PDF form because when you solve the practice question at home, what happens if I give you the solution here only? What you will do? What you will do? You will just do the check the answer here. You will, you will not solve it. Even though you will solve it, you see the answer first. You will see the answer first and then you will solve it. So, it will not help you to understand where you are doing the mistakes. So, what are intentionally, the solution is not given here in the study material which is provided by BB Virtuals to you. So, here where you will find the solution of this practice question. The link is given to you when you subscribe for these lectures. The link is given to you and the link is given to you. And what happened? Here in Google Drive link, you can see there the practice question solution is there, given there. The practice question solution is given there. So, you can cross check the answers there. And believe me, I will tell you about the notebook, how to maintain the notebook and all. But when you will do the practice question, don't see the solution first. If any new adjustment is in, in those practice questions, obviously, before I will give you the in homework, I will discuss about I will discuss about those new points and then I will give you in homework. So what happened here? So when you will solve those homework practice questions, what happened is that you will do it may happen, you will do some mistake. But it's okay. It's okay to do some mistakes. But what happened when you will cross check? You will, you will solve the practice question, you will cross check it. You will cross check it with, you will cross check it with the solution which is provided to you. When the solution which is provided to you will cross check it, maybe you have done 100% correct. Maybe it may happen that you have done some mistakes there. You have done some mistakes there. But it's okay to do mistake. At least you know where you have done the mistake. At least you know where you have done the mistake. And believe me, next time you will not do that. You, next time you will not do that mistake again. You will not do that. Because you know that where you have done mistake. So what happened? In fact, when you have done some mistake, when you cross check it with the solution which is provided to you, if you have done some mistake, mark it with red ink. Mark it with red ink. Okay, so mark it with red ink. So you can mark where you have done the mistake in practice question. Class question, you don't have to worry. We'll solve in class only. Practice question, we'll solve at home. I will discuss those questions if there is any new adjustment is there. What happened then? Then we will, what happened? Uh, what happens, then you will solve those questions at home. So, if you do some mistakes there, just mark it with red ink that you have done some mistake here. So, what happens next time, you will come to know that when you will do the revision, you will come to know that you have done some mistake here. So, when you see the red ink there, so you come to know that you have done some mistake there when you when you are doing the practice at home. So, you will not do the, that mistake again and again. You will not do that. Okay. Now, what happened, a very important part now, about the notebook that I want to tell you, how many notebook you have to maintain, how many notebook you have to maintain, you just have to maintain two, first, today you have to purchase two notebook, you have to purchase how many notebook, two notebook, and these two notebooks, it will be for 400 pages, for how many pages, it will be for 400 pages, same, 400 pages, 400 pages, 400 pages, why two notebook? One is for class, one is for class questions, okay. One is for class questions and another one is for practice question and another one is for practice question. The first you have class question and here you will solve all the class question when I will solve, when I solve in class and the practice question. You practice the two separate book. One is for class book and one is for practice book. What happened? So every time we we'll start every chapter with this concept builder. So concept builder, where I will write this concept builder? In this concept builder, in every chapter, space is given for concept builder in the material which is provided to you by the by BB Virtual. And I strongly said I will share this after the completion of every chapter. I will share this concept builder with you in PDF form, the same Google Drive link. But I strongly suggest you have study material, you have these two books, one is on company's account and one is on account standard. you have these two books. So, when I write down this concept, I will discuss about the concept, it is always better to write it down this concept with me. I will give you time, you don't worry. 
but i will also share the pdf pdf of this concept builder so here the concept builder is will be written you will write, write it on on the study material which is provided by bb virtual the class question you will solve in the one notebook which is for the class questions only and second notebook is of the purchase uh, second notebook is of the sorry practice question these are the practice question so you have to purchase two notebook one is for class question and one is for the practice question so when you solve the practice question then after solving every practice question cross check your solution with the solution which is provided to you so the solution is provided in google drive link and cross check it where you have done the mistake if you have not done the mistake very good if you have done the mistake no problem just see where you have done the mistake so and cross check it with the solution which is provided if you have any doubt you can tell you can post it on telegram group you can uh, whatsapp here we have every week we have a zoom session you can ask me there also so you can do that so this will be the pattern and after the completion of every chapter i will do the revision of that chapter and then you have to appear for test so this will be the process and this will be the process and remember one thing i will write it down here in the study in the class book whenever i write it, i will prefer to write it on blue ink only so whenever there is any important point any comment any remarks any explanation that i will write it down in that i will write it down in which ink that i will write it down in red ink or i will change the color so i strongly suggest to you to purchase the two colors of paint one is blue or back black whatever you are comfortable and another one is a red so whenever i whenever i use the red ink you have you have also used the red ink why because there are if any important point any explanation so you for that you have to use the some different color so when you will do the revision you know those these are the important points you understand this point so this will be the process this will be the process okay now what i'm expecting from you what i'm expecting from you that some of you some of you doing this ca intermediate after the after your ca foundation and some students are also those who are doing ca intermediate after completing your graduation you are coming from the graduation route but what i am expecting from you i am not expecting that you are very good in accounting but what i am expecting from you you know the basics of accounting i will tell me sir what do you mean by basics of basics of accounting i mean to say you know that what i am expecting from you what i am expecting from you you know that what do you mean by personal real and nominal account you know that i what this much i am expecting from you that you know that know that the what is personal real account personal real nominal account how we pass general entries how we prepare ledger how we do posting in ledger okay this basic account i am expect i am not expecting that you are very good in accounting even though you are average student or below average student it's okay but the basic thing i am expecting from you that you know that what do you mean by personal real and nominal account how to pass journal entries how to pass i will obviously in every chapter i will discuss about journal entries of that chapter obviously but the basic journal entries you know that basic entries you know that how to pass journal entries by personal real or nominal or that modern approach okay this basic thing i am expecting from you i am not expecting from you that you are very good in accounting you know each and everything no just basic thing obviously i will discuss about all the journal entries all the accounting treatment in every chapter but i am expecting that you know some basics of accounting if you are coming from ca foundation i am sure that you know about it even if you are coming from graduation route so so in your graduation if you are from the commerce stream if you have done your commerce stream a graduation in commerce stream you know about it personal real and nominal you know about it but but very rare so very it it happened very rare that very it happened very rare that few student doing this ca after graduation and they have done their graduation not in commerce stream they have done in some other than commerce stream so what about them so i'm so i'm telling that so first you have to go through some basics of accounting okay for that is of 11th standard or 12th standard basic of accounting i'm not saying that you have to be very expert in accounting i'm expecting from you you should know the basics of accounting because you are at ca intermediate level you are at a ca intermediate level so you should know some basics of accounting how to pass journal entries what is personal real and nominal okay so first we will cover in our uh, class this company is like all these six chapter i will cover so i will start with buyback of securities and then one by one we will solve and after the completion of your first book that is company's account 
these are your first book companies account and others and you believe me you don't have to refer any other books no need to refer any other book because all the 100% question of rtp mock test paper and the, that uh, ica study material latest study material or 100% question are already covered in this study material you don't have to need refer any other book okay so first we will cover this company's account part and then after that we will cover second that is related to accounting standard so here your first chapter here your first chapter in your company's account and if you have any doubt you can whatsapp me on this number don't call do normal okay you, you can just whatsapp me on this on this number okay okay so what happened that so first we'll cover the company's account part and you have to and second part will be your accounting standard so you will get these two books you will get these two books one is on company's account and one is on accounting standard and believe me with them you can score 75 plus 80 plus in account but you have and every time in every chapter the most important thing is the concept of that chapter once you understand the concept and when you will solve question when you will do the practice of question you you will easily solve those questions but your first focus always be on concept of that chapter if you are good in concept you will solve easily question you don't have to worry about number of question you are solving so many questions will solve in class i will give you so many question on not but in class you will solve so many question and daily you will get at least two question for homework okay so Today you have to purchase two notebook. First is that uh, for the class question and, and practice question. And you don't have to worry also that you can see a day one I have written here. Yes, day one. So what I will do, day one, concept builder I will write it down in your study material which is provided to that is this is buyback of security. This is your first chapter. Okay. And every time this is my class book. This is my class book. Okay. This is my you will purchase your notebook today. So this is my class notebook. I will solve question here. So I will solve question here and what I will do, I will solve question here and daily I will share the PDF of this PDF of, you will see the PDF in same Google Drive link, day one, day two, day three. So you will get, so you will get a PDF of every class, class question. Whenever I will solve it, daily I will share it. Okay, daily, daily I will share it, this class question, class, you know, day, day one, day two, day three. And I will also share after the completion of every chapter, I will also share the concept build. You can see on the screen chapter number one, this is a material which is provided to you by bb virtual okay the first chapter is buyback of securities so if you are comfortable you can write it with me in your if you have study metal maybe you have not yet received the study metal if you have received the study metal then it is good you can write it with me and i strongly suggest to write it with me when i will write it so it will help you to retain the point okay to retain the point for longer retain the point for longer period so i help you to i i suggest you to write it down the concept builder with me but if you say no i am not comfortable i first i have to concentrate on it so it's okay but I, after the completion of every chapter, I will also share this concept builder with the student, the PDF of this concept builder. Okay. So first we will start. First chapter is buyback of securities. So where I am writing this? I am writing this in the study material. Study material which is provided to you by BB Virtual. Whenever you see my pick, na, this cartoon pick. So you will see there that, uh, that it is a study material study material pages you can see in, in this is page number two so this is a page number one of study material page number one of study material okay so first chapter is buyback of securities now concentrate so first what i will write it down first i will write it down here the concept builder so first let me give the heading here concept builder very important okay first is concept builder just listen me okay okay listen what happen is that any company suppose there is a company called suppose there is a company called abc limited so there is a company called abc limited first chapter it is okay there is a company called abc limited so every company when they want to when they run the business they want some fund so from where they can raise the fund they have various options that they can raise the fund they can raise the fund by issue of shares in the market, by issue of debentures in the market. They can raise the fund by taking a loan from banks. So they have various options. But I am discussing here about the issue of shares in the market. So what happens is that they issue the shares in the market. They issue the shares in the market. So there are two types of, there are issue the shares in the market. Just give me one minute. Okay, they are issue. Okay, so they issue the shares in the market. 
what do you mean by issue of share what do you mean by issue of shares so company like in case of proprietorship firm in case of uh, partnership firm what they do in case of proprietorship firm or in case of partnership firm the owner contribute in the partnership firm or proprietorship firm we call it capital but what happen in case of company company in case of company the company issue the shares in the market and anyone who can who want to purchase the shares of that company they purchase the shares of that company and they purchase the shares of that company so what we call it we call it capital so in case of proprietorship firm the proprietor contribute in case of partnership firm partners contribute in case of company who contribute to company to run the business shareholders so there are two types of shareholder there are two types of shareholder first is preference shareholder first is preference shareholders first is preference shareholder so there are two types of shareholder first is preference shareholder and second one is equity shareholders equity share holders so what happen here if the company wants some funds suppose abc limited want to raise 100 crore rupees what they will do they will offer to public to you want to purchase the shares of the company so if the shareholder say yes we want to purchase the shares of the company so they may be preference shareholder and equity shareholder what do you mean by preference shareholders in case of preference shareholders they you can see from the name that in case of preference shareholders we are giving the preference shareholder the preference in two cases what what do you mean by in two cases we are giving the because both are shareholder but we call him preference shareholder what we call him we call him preference shareholders so we are giving them preference we are giving them preference in two cases to preference shareholders we are giving them preference in two cases first in case of winding up of company before we give the payment think from the company's point of view things from the company's point of view think you are abc limited think you are abc limited so what happened when the company if suppose company goes into liquidation or the company is wind up so first before equity shareholder will give the payment to preferential will repay their amount but before the equity shareholder will give them to we will give to preference shareholder that's why we call them preference shareholder that's it and also before we give dividend to equity shareholder before we give dividend to equity shareholder we give dividend to whom we give dividend to preference shareholder so before we give dividend to equity shareholder we give dividend to whom we give dividend to whom we give dividend to preference shareholders okay so that's why we call them preference shareholder that's it so what happen if the company wants to raise some fund so they have various option they have various option they can issue the shares in the market they can issue the debentures in the market they can take a loan from bank as well so they have various option but the name of this chapter is not issue of shares issue of shares is a part of your ca foundation level is a part of your ca foundation you have already covered an issue of share the name of this chapter is what the name of this chapter the name of this chapter is buyback what do you mean by buyback of securities so here what happened now the company wants to buy back these shares the, what the company wants to buy back these shares so first you have issued these share, shares in past now the company wants to buy back these securities what do you mean by buy back what do you mean by buy back of securities and i am telling you here some of you may think yes sir buy back means uh, here some of the whether we are taking the taking back to this preference shares or equity shares so there are two different chapter for buy back first when you take the preference share when you take back when you cancel this preference share that you have issued in the market we call it redemption of preference share which is not the part of your syllabus still i will discuss about the redemption of preference share also later but here because the redemption of preference share now it is a part of new syllabus ca foundation okay but here buy back of securities means i am doing the what reversal of equity shares so i am talking only about the equity shares i am talking only about here the equity shares i am not discussing about issue of shares i am talking about the buy back of securities 
securities means that securities means that i am discussing here about securities here means i am talking about equity shares i am not talking about preference shares here so i am talking about preference equity shares here okay so what do you mean by buyback buyback means reversal of what do you mean by buyback buyback means reversal of equity shares reversal of equity share we are taking back those equity shares first you have issued in the past in the market this chapter is not about the issue of shares in the market this chapter is about the buyback of securities which securities we are talking about here equity shareholder we are talking about equity share the equity share that you have issued in the past in the market we are taking back we are cancelling that we are reversal of those equity share that is buyback of securities so here it means that reversal of equities uh, reversal of equity share means that means purchase of its own equity share means purchase of its own equity shares and cancelled by the company so what happened that why we will discuss about what what the reason why company do the buyback buyback means we are cancelling we are taking back this equity shares from equity shareholder and we are cancelling so purchase what we are doing here we are purchase our own equity share and we are cancel we are cancelling by the company those equity share so we are cancelling the equity share reversal of equity shares we are doing but why the company do the reversal of these equity share if you see the buy we will discuss about the reason as well but when you see the balance sheet here you can see here in balance sheet so you can see here in balance sheet balance sheet liability side balance sheet liability side liability liability side and this is asset side the balance sheet of suppose what the name of company is abc limited so you can see here abc limited abc limited balance sheet it is so here you can see on liability side there are equity share capital preference share capital okay suppose there are some loans some creditors whatever but here we are discussing about the cancellation of this equity so what we are doing here we are cancelling this equity we are cancelling this equity we are doing a reversal here so we are cancelling this equity here what we are doing we are cancelling this equity here okay so why why we are cancelling this equity and very important when you purchase any equity share we are we have purchased first we have issued in the market and this chapter is not about the issue of shares in the market this chapter is about the buyback taking back our shares and cancel them you cannot say that that sir i will purchase my share we think from the abc's company the abc limited point of view the so thing from the abc is limited point of view so we will take we will purchase equity shares from the market we will purchase equity shares from the market but do we will not show it as an investment here so let's think so i may be silly me i will purchase my own shares from the market i have, i have purchased the shares when i purchase the share i will not show as an investment here i will cancel the i will purchase it and cancel it the equity share that we have issued in the market we want to cancel it not all 100% there are some rules of the companies act we cannot cancel all the equity share i will i will tell you later that the 25% maximum that we can do in a one year i will just we will discuss about it but some part of equity you want to cancel it no, but why you want to cancel we will discuss but what do you mean by buyback of securities buyback of securities means that we are cancelling we are cancelling our equity shares equity we here we are discussing about the cancel cancellation of equity share this chapter is not about the cancellation of preference share this chapter is about the cancellation of equity shares only some adjustment will come for the cancellation of preference shares also which is now not a part of your syllabus it is covered now in ca foundation level but still i will discuss about what the cancellation of preference shares also when that adjustment will come we will discuss about it but mainly this chapter is about the buyback of which share equity or preference equity shares okay so here what happened here why the company wants to do the buyback what is the reason why the company wants to do the buyback okay just one so reason of buyback reason of buy back why the company wants to do the buy back first i will write it on each and everything systematically just first you have to focus on concept just first you have to focus on concept okay your focus 100% will be on concept only 
okay okay <clears throat> what happened here the first reason why the company wants to do do buyback is increase earning per share earning per share to increase earning per share what is this earning per share earning per share in short we for, we call it eps basically this is the accounting standard 20 earning per share the eps deals by accounting standard 20 how we calculate eps will discuss in accounting standard 20 only but understand why the company do the buyback first reason you can call it advantage you can call it is why the advantages or the reason of the buyback So why the company do to do the buyback? They want to increase the EPS, but how the EPS will increase? Let's understand this. How the EPS will increase here? Now understand this one. Suppose this is a balance sheet. This is a balance sheet of ABC Limited. The balance sheet of ABC Limited. The balance sheet of ABC Limited. Okay. Now what happened here? Suppose these are the equity share, equity shares. capital of abc limited okay how much is the equity shares of abc limited here if i say that number of shares number of shares of abc limited suppose if i say how many number of shares 50000 existing number of shares is how much 50000 so existing number of shares of abc limited suppose is 50000 okay now what happen is that How much is the EPS? So earning per share before buyback. We have not yet done the buyback. So how to calculate EPS? We will discuss in detail in accounting standard twenty, which is a part of accounting standard twenty. But what happened there? The EPS, that profit divided by number of shares. Suppose the profit of company is rupees two lakh. Suppose the profit of the company profit divided by Number of share. There is a way to calculate the number of share. We we calculate by weighted average number of share. So that is a part of accounting standard twenty. But here the profit divided by just remember number of shares. So num number of shares. So if I say here, suppose the profit is rupees twenty lakh. How much profit to make it simple? Just suppose the profit is of rupees suppose two lakh. How much is the profit? Two lakh. How much the profit of the company? Two lakh. Now, if I how many number of existing shares they have? So they have how many shares they have? They have fifty thousand shares. So two lakh divided by if I say fifty thousand shares, the first two lakh is the profit number of shares they have fifty thousand. So two lakh divided by fifty thousand, how much it is? It is rupees four. How much it is rupees four? So earning per share before buyback earning. Per share before before buyback earning per share before buyback. How much before buyback earning per share is rupees four? Now what happen when you do the buyback? The profit will not be affected when you do the buyback. The profit will not be affected. What will be affected? Number of shares will be reduced. Now buyback means you are taking back your number of shares. So you are cancelling the number of equity shares. The equity share before buyback, which was how many number of share, which was fifty thousand. Now, if suppose if you have done the buyback of, if you have done the buyback of buyback of how many shares, if you have done the buyback of ten thousand shares. So, how many shares you have now? You have now forty thousand shares. How many shares you have? You have now forty thousand shares. So, the shares before the buyback, it was fifty thousand. Now you have done the buyback of ten thousand. So how many number of shares you have after buyback? After buyback, how many shares you have after buyback? We have forty thousand shares. Because what do you mean by buyback? You are cancelling your equity shares. So before cancelling, it was fifty thousand. Now you have cancelled ten thousand shares. After cancelling, how much it is? It is just forty thousand shares. It. So earning per share. Earning per share after buyback. Earning per share after buyback. So here, profit divided by same number of shares. Number of shares. 
how much is the profit profit is same 2 lakh but your number of shares which is reduced from 50,000 shares to 40,000 shares so how many number of shares you have now we have 40,000 shares so 2 lakh divided by 40,000 how much it will come it will come rupees 5 eh? so don't you see here that you are you can see here that here it is increased from rupees 4 to rupees 5 so your earning per share increase it increase your earning per share why why it has increased increases earning per share because before the buyback before the buyback it was rupees how much it was number of share was how much 50000 now your denominator your profit divided by number of shares now how many shares are outstanding 40000 only why because you have done the cancellation of 10000 shares so 50 minus 10 it comes how much 40000 shares so how much it is it is 40000 shares so 50 from 50 your number of share reduced to 40 so how many shares you have now uh, uh, how many EPS? It, it was 4 not increased from 4 to 5 so earning per share was rupees 4 now how much it is it is rupees 5 so here here you can write it down like this that 50000 minus 40000 shares how, sorry not 50 minus not 40 50 minus 10 you have done the buyback of 10000 shares the profit is as it is your number of shares reduced from 50 to 40 50 minus 10 so that was eps earning per share increase you know that there is a chapter called financial statement of company that will be chapter number 2 where I will teach you the financial statement of company, how the financial statement prepared by company, the financial, how the financial statement prepared by the company. So that is a schedule three. They prepare the financial statement as per schedule three. We'll discuss about it later. Basically, schedule three talks about the presentation of financial statement by company. So what happened there? So we'll see that in their presentation, there is a heading is given EPS in profit and loss account. So we have to also disclose the EPS. How much is the earning per share? So here by buyback, the earning per share increases from rupees four. You can see here in example, it increases from rupees four to rupees five. So first reason for the reason, uh, for buyback of share is the increased EPS. Now second one, second one is that increase, increase promoters holding. It increase what? It increase promoters holding. Why? How it increase promoters holding? Who is the promoters? With the promoter, the, the, the promoter are the person who started the company. Okay, they were started the company, the promoters. So how the promoter also purchase the shares of the company? So promoters, they want to increase the holding of the promoter. But how it increase the holding of the promoters? Now understand this one. Here the word is the balance sheet of ABC Limited. In the balance sheet of ABC Limited. Okay. The balance sheet of ABC Limited. Now understand this point. Suppose they have the asset of rupees. Suppose they have the asset of rupees 20 crore. Suppose they have equity share capital. Suppose of rupees 10 crore. Preference share capital of rupees 5 crore. And suppose that they have the loan of rupees 5 crore. So total here is, is a total of balance sheet 2020. Okay, total of balance sheet 2020. Now understand this point. What happened here? What when you do the buyback? When you do the buyback, what happened there? The share capital reduces because buyback is nothing but the cancellation of equity shares. Now what happened here? If I say that before buyback, now understand this point. Before buyback, then you have done the buyback. Okay, buyback. And here the position is after buyback. Now understand this point. Now before the buyback, the prop out of 10, suppose promoters hold 3. Before buyback, buyback and after buyback. So before the buyback, promoters hold. Suppose out of 10 crore, the 6 crore shares hold by suppose promoter. And other hold 4 crores. The total is 10 crores. Now what happened? We have done the buyback. What do you mean buyback? We have done the cancellation of equity share. We have purchased the shares and we have cancelled it. But we have not purchased the shares from promoters. We have purchased the shares from others, outsiders. 
सपोज वी हैव परचेज द इक्विटी शेयर ऑफ टू करोड़ तो वॉट हैपन देर आफ्टर बाय बैक आफ्टर बाय बैक वी हैव परचेज बाय बैक मीन कैंसलेशन ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर तो बिफोर द बाय बैक द प्रमोटर होल्ड सिक्स करोड़ शेयर तो ये विल कम सेम सिक्स करोड़ After buyback, what I mean, we have cancelled the equity shares of outsider. So it was we have purchased the equity shares and cancel it. So it was four. Then we have done buyback. How much it will be left after buyback? It will be left two only. So total number of equity shares after buyback two six crore plus two crore. It's come eight crore. So how much equity shares we have after? How much is the equity share capital after buyback? We have eight crore. So before the buyback, before the buyback, equity share capital was rupees ten crore. Now after the buyback, the equity share capital is how much? It is now eight crore. So before the buyback, it was ten crores. Now after the buyback, it is how much? It is eight crores. Now what happened is that how can we say that there is the increase promoters holding? The how can we say that there is the increase in promoters holding? We want to increase the holding of promoter. That's why we do the buyback. This is one of the reason. But how I can say that there is the increase in promoters holding? How can I say that there is a? How can I say that there is an increase in promoters holding? Now see, here. what happened is that before buyback, before buyback, promoters holding before buyback. You can see promoters holding. Okay, so promoters holding, promoters holding before buyback. How much is it? Total equity share capital before buyback suppose ten crore. You can see ten crore. Out of ten crore, six crores hold by promoters. So if percentage by sixty percent hold by, who hold sixty percent hold by promoters. Okay, before buyback. Now promoters holding. Promoters holding after buyback. So promoters holding after buyback. So here what happened? What happened? Promoters holding after buyback. Total number of equity share equity share capital is how much after buyback? You can see eight crore. Yes. So total number of total equity share capital is eight crore. Out of eight crore, six crores hold by promoters. Out of eight crore, six crore hold by promoters. So six divided by eight multiplied by hundred. That's come seventy five percent. So when you do the buyback, when you do the cancellation of equity shares, we have purchased the shares from outsider and we have cancelled it. We have cancelled it. So what happened here is that the promoter's holding increases from sixty percent to seventy-five percent because we have cancelled some shares of outsider. So that is a buyback. We have purchased it and we have cancelled it. So promoter's holding increases now out of eight six crore hold by promoter. Previously out of ten six crores hold by Promoters. So here, promoters holding increases from sixty percent to seventy five percent. This is one of the reason of buyback of equity shares. Now, on buyback, the EPS also increases. Promoters holding increases, and sometimes it may happen that sometimes it may happen that that the value which is quoted on stock exchange is less than the worth of that shares. What does it mean? So first, let me write it down. First, here to support to support the share price to support the share price on stock exchange to support the share price stock exchange when share price. in market in market is less than is less than its worth is less than its worth do you understand this part what happen suppose this stock exchange suppose this is stock exchange and the price of the share which is quoted there is stock exchange the price of the share which is quoted there rupees 75 suppose stock exchange the stock exchange you can call it a market price how much is the market price of the share market price of the share is 75 so we want to do buyback to increase the eps we want to do buyback 
to increase the promoters holding we also want to do the buyback to tell them in the market that the value of those share which is quoted in the stock exchange is much more than that the what at what price is quoted in stock exchange it is quoted at rupees 75 but i want to do the buyback i will do the buyback suppose you are the equity shareholders of the company i will offer you you are the equity shareholder of the company i will offer you listen 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 you equity shareholder the price which is quoted in stock exchange is at rupees 75 rupees the price at which it is quoted in the stock exchange is rupees at 75 rupees but i want to purchase your share not at rupees 75 rupees i want to purchase i want to offer you i am offering you i want to purchase this share at rupees 90 which is more than the market price what does it mean because i want to give the message in the market that the price which is quoted in the stock exchange is rupees 75 the value of this share is much more than rupees 75 rupees so i am offering you the share which is quoted in the stock exchange at rupees 75 the market price of the share which is 75 rupees i want to purchase this same share at rupees 90 because i want to give the message in the market that the value of this share is much more than rupees 75 rupees so that's why i want to do the buyback so because i want to show in the market i want to give the message in the market the value which is quoted in the stock exchange is less than its worth it is not at rupees 75 so i will quote at rupees 75 i will quote more than the market price so why i want to quote at the market price because um to give the message i will quote more than the market price why i will quote, quote more than the market price why i want to quote more than the market price because i will give the message in the market the value which is quoted in the stock exchange is less than the it's worth it because its worth is rupees 90 so that's why i want to quote at higher price that's why i want to do the buyback here and one more is that here to do the buyback is to pay the surplus cash to to pay and don't worry i will i will share this concept builder in google drive link which is provided to those who were subscribed for this batch so here what happen here to pay surplus cash to pay surplus cash okay what do you mean by to pay surplus cash so when i am abc limited is my balance sheet i am abc limited i am abc limited this abc limited this is my balance sheet in my abc limited balance sheet and I, i have enough cash balance enough cash balance i so what i want to purchase this share from the i can do the buyback for it to increase the ips to increase the promoters holding to give the message in the market that its value is more than which is quoted what is quoted in the stock exchange and i have enough cash suppose and i don't want to give the dividend dividend regularly to equity shareholders i want to reduce the burden of dividend which i am paying to equity shareholder and i have enough cash so what i can do what i can do i can do the buyback i can take back my shares i can cancel those shares so what happen if the equity share capital goes down obviously the amount of dividend will also go down and i have enough cash so i don't want to give one i don't want to give i don't want to give much control to outsider that's why that's why and i have enough cash So why don't you take back your shares and cancel it? So it may be a reason that you have enough cash. You want to cancel. You have enough cash, so you want to do the buyback. So these are the reason of buyback of shares. So what happens is that you can do the buyback. You can do the as there is and there is a com in the companies that there is a section sixty eight. Basically here when we do the accounting, we'll discuss from the accounting point of view. But sometimes it is necessary to understand the what the law says. because when you do the accounting we also have to take into consideration what law says about those uh, those area for example here we are doing the buyback of shares so we have to know what law says about the buyback of equity shares because when we do the accounting we have to take into consideration to those points also so i will come to accounting part later later we'll discuss about the accounting part you don't have to worry accounting part but there are i will in detail we'll discuss about the entry but what happen is that before that we have to know the provision of section 68 what is sex, what is section 68 says section 68 says that we can do the buyback section 68 says that just one minute so section 68 i'm writing here section 68 and we'll discuss about why we do the accounting why we do uh, we will discuss why what is section 68 what is the reason why what section 60 says that says that we can do the buyback out of fresh issue of shares and out of profit and what is the logic behind this we'll discuss about it here in detail the section 68 of companies act 
of companies that and daily what happened and daily what happened uh, i will give you the break for 10 minutes so you can see that lecture one lecture one or you can see the day one part one part two okay like that so in every one and a half hour the classes will be for three hours daily but in every one and a half hour i will uh, on an average one and a half hour i'll give you a break for 10 minutes so every day you will see day part one part two day two part one part two like that okay so you have we have a break for 10 minutes okay daily so here i will give you a break uh, okay after 20, 10 20 minutes i will give you a break okay so on an average after one and a half hour or two hours i will give you a break for 10 minutes and then will second part will start okay now listen so section 16 of companies act 2013 says that you can do the buyback you can do the buyback what you can do you can do the buyback this says that understand this point this says that you can do the buyback but buyback buyback out of out of we can we can do the buyback out of what do you mean by out of we will discuss about it don't worry so what what is buyback out of out of fresh issue of share fresh issue of shares and you can do buyback out of you can out of fresh issue of shares and out of profit what does it mean <clears throat> this we can do the buyback out of fresh issue of shares or out of profit okay just one minute buyback buyback out of fresh issue of shares and out of profit now one by one first i am discussing here what do you mean by out of fresh issue of shares now listen carefully what do you mean by buy back out of fresh issue of shares okay one by one basic accounting first okay understand this point what happened when we do the buyback when we do the buyback so obviously if we do the buyback the share capital will decrease share capital will decrease and it's very basic accounting is that whenever there's an increase in capital if the capital increases we credit it remember this thing whenever they whenever there's an increase in capital share capital will in, whenever uh, increase in capital share capital will be credited and wherever there is a decrease in capital share capital will be debited remember this thing basic accounting that you have already covered the CFO foundation level still i'm doing the basic accounting so whenever there is a increase in capital what we do credit whenever we create increase in capital credit decrease in capital debit remember this thing okay let me write here increase in capital remember this huh? for your increase in capital what entry do you pass suppose any contribute for example proprietor introduced 10 lakh rupees in business so cash account debit to proprietor's capital account so capital increases na? so increase in capital we will credit to capital account decrease in capital when the capital withdrawn by the any proprietor partner or shareholder the decrease in capital so decrease in capital will be debited okay you understand basic point okay now understand this point what are remember this whenever there is the increase in capital what we will do we will credit it whenever there is a decrease in capital what we will do we will debit it okay now understand this point what does it mean that we want to do buyback what does it mean we want to do buyback out of fresh issue of shares what does it mean that we want to do buyback out of fresh issue of shares now listen carefully what happened what happened out of fresh issue of shares so here i will say here issue of shares issue of shares wait don't write anything okay don't write anything first let me write about the buyback we'll do a buyback of shares yes sir we are doing the buyback of shares buyback of equity shares okay so in both the cases i will say here buyback of shares buyback of shares but what does it mean out of fresh issue of shares or out of profit i will explain you don't worry but remember first thing here when you do the buyback whether the capital will increase or decrease what do you mean by buyback cancellation of share capital what do you mean by buyback cancellation of share capital so when you do the buyback when we do the buyback cancellation of share capital when we do the cancellation of share capital whether the capital will increase or decrease capital will decrease when you do the buyback 
when you do the barter, you are cancelling the capital. You are cancelling the capital. The decrease in capital. What we do when there is a decrease in capital? Debit. Decrease in capital debit. So, we will pass entry here. We will pass entry here at the time of uh, buyback of shares. At the time of buyback of shares, equity share capital account debit. Equity share capital account debit. Okay, equity share capital account debit. Suppose the equity share capital is of rupees 2 crore. Suppose, just to explain. Okay, equity share capital is of rupees 2 crore. So, but decrease in capital, equity share capital account debit. We are liable to pay so to bank account. Suppose we have paid amount rupees 2 crore. So, decrease in capital. So, decrease in capital we have debited it. So, decrease in capital we have debited it. Yes, I you understand this. Sir. Decrease in capital, debit. So, we, we, when we do the buyback, capital, is go, capital will go down. So, decrease in capital, debit. So, equity share capital account debited to bank account. But what happened is that, here it is mentioned that this buyback is out of fresh issue of shares. What does it mean out of fresh issue of shares? So, section 68 says that, so when you do the buyback, you can do the buyback out of fresh issue of shares. So, I will issue some other share in market. I will issue some other shares in market. So, we can issue that shares in the market. We can issue that shares in the market. Just one minute. So, out of, what do you mean by out of fresh issue of share? Issue of share. So, we will issue some shares in the market. That issue of shares may be at par, that issue of shares in the market, it may be at par or it may be at premium. Now, understand this point. What does it mean? It may be at par or it may be at premium. Now, understand this point. What happened here? What happened? The section 68 says that, the replacement of capital should be capital. I will say, what does it mean? The replacement of capital should be capital. It means that I have decreased the capital here. Do you agree? Yes, sir. We have decreased the capital here. We have decreased the capital here by rupees 2 crore. So, decrease in capital, decrease in capital what? Decrease in capital debit. So, we have debited here equity share capital account. So, decrease in capital debit, yes. But what does it mean the replacement of capital should be capital? What section 68 says that? So, section 68 says that you have, you can issue shares in the market and by whatever amount you have cancelled the capital. By whatever amount you have cancelled the capital, the same amount of capital should be introduced. What does it mean? Here I have cancelled the capital. Here, here I have cancelled the equity share capital. Yes, I agree that when you have done the buyback, you have reduced the share capital. So, you have debited the equity share capital by rupees how much? 2 crores. But section 68 says that you can do the buyback. No problem. You can do the buyback. But at the same time, you have to increase the capital by 2 crores only. It means that we have done the buyback of equity shares. Now, we have to issue the shares in the market. Then only we can say there is an increase in capital. But we cannot issue the same class of shares. Here, if you are doing the buyback of equity shares, I can say we will issue the preference shares in the market. But they are saying that the replacement of capital should be capital. Here, I have reduced the capital by rupees 2 crore. So, Companies Act says that you can do the buyback of equity share, but at the same time, you have to increase the capital also. So, we have to issue the shares in the market to increase the capital. So, here I will pass entry, here I will pass entry, bank account debit, bank account debit, you can see, this bank account debit to share capital account, to share capital, I will discuss about it, but when you do the buyback, the new share that you want to issue in the market, it should not be the same class, so that's why we are doing the buyback over equity share and I am issuing the market the preference share. So, here bank account debit to preference share capital account, but why preference share capital of 2 crore, but why we have credited, because we have issued the shares in the market and it should be of same amount. So, we have decreased the capital by rupees 2 crore, so new capital should be increased, new capital, the increase in capital should be of rupees 2 crore only. So, here increase in capital, so you can see there, you can see there that we have reduced the capital by rupees 2 crore. We have reduced the capital by rupees 2 crore. 
but at the same time but at this we have reduced the capital by rupees 2 crore but at the same time we have increased the capital by rupees how much 2 crore this is what section 68 want us to do that we can do the buyback out of fresh issue of shares so you can do the buyback you can reduce the capital but at the same time you have to issue the new we have to increase the same amount of capital so how can we increase the same amount of capital by issuing the shares in the market and those shares which we want to issue in the market should not be of same class as per companies act so here new preferential is supposed preferential capital you know sometimes it may happen and you may think that the share is of rupees 2 crore only but we are issuing at suppose premium in the market we may issue the new fresh issue of shares at par we can also issue at what premium so here if i say i am issuing the shares at premium so i will pass here entry suppose bank account debit i have received suppose 3 crore rupees to preference share capital account preference share capital account how much 2 crore to securities premium to securities premium account to securities to securities premium account 1 crore you know that when we issue shares at premium so we will write it down what do you mean by premium more than the more than the face value so here if you issue the shares of rupees 2 crore we have issued at rupees 3 so that 1 rupee will go in securities premium and the face value will uh, will come only in this preferential capital now some of you think no 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 sir there is a mistake here so what is the mistake here you say no no sir there is a decrease in capital you say that the replacement of capital should be with capital yes i agree the replacement of capital should be capital what do you mean by replacement of capital should be capital let me write for just a minute. one minute capital should be should be replaced with capital the replacement of capital should be capital so capital should be replaced with capital so here we are replacing the capital with capital what does it mean the decrease in capital is of rupees 2 crore but at the same time you issue the shares in the market so there is an increase in capital so you have done the buyback here so you have reduced the capital so you have, then you have issued the other shares in the market then you have increased the capital here but it may happen that that you have issued the shares in the market at premium so how much amount we have received suppose the shares of rupees 2 crore we have issued at 3 crore so i have received here I have received here how much I have received here 3 crore rupees I have received here so some of you think some of you may think sir no 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 you have reduced the capital by rupees 2 crore but you have increased but you have received amount of rupees 3 crore so it's okay here the replacement of capital should be capital what does it mean you can see here that even though I have received in securities premium I have reduced the capital here by rupees 2 crore and I have increased the capital of rupees 2 crore only you say no, no sir, there is an increase in security premium. I don't care about securities premium. The company's account says that the whatever amount you have debited, the same amount should be credited. Whatever amount you have reduced the capital by whatever amount, with the same amount, new capital should be introduced. So I have reduced the capital of rupees 2 crore here. Here I have increased the capital of rupees 2 crore. And here also I have increased the capital of rupees 2 crore only. What about that 1 crore? That 1 crore is a part of security premium account. So if that one crore is a part of security, it is not a replacement of capital. Rep capital should be replaced with capital. So this is not a, here we have replaced the capital with capital two crores only. So you don't misinterpret it or don't, I mean to say here that don't take it otherwise that, that we have cancelled the capital by rupees two crore, but we have increased the capital by rupees uh, three crore. No, no, no. We have increased the capital by two crores only. That one crore represents the securities premium. The, sec the company that like not put a restriction on the amount, amount may be 3 crore, 4 crore, 10 crore, whatever amount. I don't care about that. The company's account, company's act says that, that replacement of capital should be, repl uh, the replacement of capital should be with capital. The capital should be replaced with capital. Here if I say the capital is reduced by 2 crore, I have increased the capital by 2 crore. Here even, even if I issued that premium, the capital is reduced by 2 crore, I have increased the capital by 2 crore. So I have fulfilled the requirement of company's act 2013. But what does it mean when it says that you can do the buyback of shares out of profit? Suppose I am ABC Limited. Now, the, if the company that counts, the company that says me that listen, ABC Limited, that if you want to do buyback, if you want to do buyback, you can do buyback. But that buyback 
should be out of fresh issue option i will tell them no sir i don't want to do out of fresh issue option yes. i have enough fund when i do the buyback when i do the cancellation of equity shares i have enough fund i have surplus fund to pay to those equity shares why should i issue the shares in the market why should i issue the shares in the market why should i issue i have enough fund i don't want to issue the fresh shares of i don't want to issue fresh shares in the market so the company access you can do the buyback out of profit but what does it mean to do the out of profit some of you may think this that if you don't if you don't want to issue the shares in the market then there will not there will not be a replacement of capital with capital there will no replacement of capital with capital here why because i am not issuing the fresh shares in the market when we issue the shares in the market there is an increase in capital there is an increase in capital when i do the buyback there is a decrease in capital so in just one way increase in capital so if i don't want to do the issue of shares in the market it means that there will be no increase in capital there will be a decrease in capital because i'm doing the buyback here so by the time of buyback the share capital will go down decrease in capital debit so i will debit to equity share capital account equity share capital account debit to bank account equity share capital account debit to bank account how much it is 2 crore and i understand this that here that here just understand it that there is a decrease in capital here that there is a decrease in capital here here decrease in capital so capital is decreased by how much the capital is decreased by how much 2 crore so there is a decrease in capital there is a decrease in capital so why there is a decrease in capital here because when we do the buyback obviously capital will go down then whenever there is a decrease in capital we have we have to debit it so here we have debited equity share capital account by rupees 2 crore but sir it is not out of fresh issue of shares when you have done the accounting by fresh issue of shares so you have, when you do the buyback when we do the buyback by fresh issue of, by issue of fresh shares in the market so you have replaced the capital with capital you have decreased the capital here you have decreased the capital here okay you have decreased the capital here and here you have increased the capital decrease the capital increase the capital so capital is replaced by capital but when you do the buyback out, out of profit you do the buyback in that case there is a reduce in there is a reduction in capital but what happen is that i am saying that i am not issuing fresh issue of shares in the market i am doing it out of profit what do you mean by out of profit so company's account say that if you don't want to issue shares in the market obviously why should i shares in the market if i have enough fund i don't want to i don't want to issue the shares in the market if i have enough fund and i don't want to issue the shares in the market company's account says that you have to transfer the face value we will write it down all these concept okay you don't have to worry first here just we have to focus on the concept here i will write it down each and everything you don't have to worry for just you have to focus on concept now if i don't want to share it if i don't want to issue shares in the market so the company's account says that in that case if you don't want to issue shares in the market it means that you are doing buyback out of profit in that case whatever amount of face value of shares or whatever amount of buyback of shares face value of buyback of share that should be transferred to a reserve and the name of that reserve is crr what do you mean by crr capital redemption reserve account what is the name of that reserve capital redemption reserve account so here if the company wants to do buyback out of profit then company is like put a restriction on that company to transfer the face value of shares of buyback to a crr account what do you mean by crr capital redemption reserve account understand the logic here if i say that out of profit then in that case i have to transfer to capital redemption reserve account where should i transfer it i have to transfer to account crr what is this crr capital redemption capital redemption reserve account capital redemption reserve account i will credit to capital redemption account why capital redemption account capital redemption reserve will be credited in short we call it crr why crr will be credited here reserve has credit balance so whenever you want to transfer we want to increase the reserve you have to credit it now 
I am not issuing any shares in the market in second case. I am not issuing any shares in the market. It can be out of fresh issue of shares or it can be out of profit. But if when it is out of profit, we are not issuing any shares in the market. Yes, we are not issuing any shares in the market. But if we don't want to issue any shares in the market, so company's account make it mandatory on us that we have to transfer the face value of buyback of share to a CRR account. CRR means Capital Redemption Reserve Account. Okay, so we have credited to Capital Redemption Reserve Account. But which account should be debited here? Which account should be debited here? If I want to transfer to Capital Redemption Reserve Account, I have transferred the face value of buyback of share. But which account should be debited here? Which account should be debited here? You understand this point. Which account should be debited here? Now, the Companies Act says that you can utilize free reserve. What do you mean by free reserve? We will write it down in detail. But what do you mean by free reserve? Free reserve account debited. Free reserve account should be debited. So we will debit to free reserve account. Now free reserve account means any reserve which can be utilized for the purpose of dividend. Which can be utilized for the purpose of dividend. We call it free reserve. The examples of free reserve are general reserve, surplus balance of profit and loss account. All these are the balances of profit and loss account, the profit surplus, okay. The general, all these are free reserve that can be utilized for the purpose of dividend. So the Companies Act says that transfer from transfer from free reserve to a capital redemption reserve account and reserve has credit balance. Reserve has credit balance. Whenever there is an increase in reserve, so reserve has credit balance. Whenever there is an increase in reserve, we have to credit it. Whenever there is a decrease in reserve, we have to debit it. Let me write it down that also here. So reserve has credit balance. So whenever there is an increase in reserve, increase in reserve, any reserve, we have to credit it. Whenever there is a decrease in reserve, we have to debit it. We have to debit it. So whenever there is an increase in reserve, we have to credit it. Whenever there is a decrease in reserve, we have to debit it. We have to debit it. Okay. So what happened here? We are transferring from one reserve to another reserve. So one from one reserve to another reserve means we are transferring from free reserve. We are transferring from we are transferring from free reserve to capital redemption reserve account. So we are transferring from free reserve to CRR account. We are transferring from free reserve to CRR account. From free reserve to capital redemption. So here the CRR will be increased the increase in reserve will be credited. That's why I have credited to CRR account. And I am utilizing free reserve to transfer to CRR account. So I have debited to which account? I have debited to free reserve account. What do you mean by free reserve? Any reserve that can be utilized for the purpose of dividend. That is free reserve. Now you will say, sir, 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 there is a problem here. What is the problem here? Sir, there is no increase in capital here. Here you can say that decrease in capital by 2 crore and increase in capital by rupees 2 crore. So here the capital should be replaced with capital. The so capital here should be replaced by capital. But what happened here? The replacement of capital should be with capital. Okay, capital should be replaced with capital. Now what happened here? Rupees two crore is replaced by this. We have decreased the capital by two crore. We have increased the capital by rupees two crore. But here there is no replacement here. Here we have decreased the capital by rupees two crore. Here we have decreased the capital by rupees two crore. But we have not increased the capital by rupees and we, we cannot say bank account debit. We are not issuing any shares in the market here in second case. We are not issuing any shares in the market in second case. So we cannot say bank account debit. So here we have utilized, we have decreased one reserve and we have increased another reserve. Now you may raise an objection. That's it. That you have increased the CRR account, but you have not increased the capital. I agree. I have not increased the capital, but you know that this capital redemption reserve account, this capital redemption reserve account, it can be utilized only and only for one purpose. So it can be utilized only, yes, utilized only for, or uh, utilized only for the purpose of, only for the purpose of bonus shares. So it can be utilized only for the purpose of what? Bonus shares. So here what happened? Here what happened? This capital redemption reserve account, it can be utilized only for the purpose of bonus share. 
So previously, bonus share was a part of your syllabus. Now it is shifted to CA bonus. But you don't worry. Even the bonus share is not a part of your syllabus. I will discuss. I will discuss about the bonus share as well because there are some adjustment will come for bonus share also. So we will discuss about it. But listen one thing: where we can utilize the CRR account? CRR account can be utilized only for one purpose. That is only for the purpose of bonus share. It means that CRR account can be utilized only and only for the purpose of what? Bonus share. If CRR account can be utilized for only for the only for the purpose of bonus share, what, what do you mean by bonus share? Bonus share means that we are issuing shares free of cost. We are issuing shares free of cost. So if you want, if you if you want to issue the shares free of cost to existing shareholder, we issue free of cost. So when we issue shares free of cost to shareholder, so what happen is that you cannot pass entry. Don't write first. Listen, you cannot pass entry bank account debit. To equity share capital. So here there is an increase in capital. Here there is an increase in capital. Increase in capital. But you cannot pass when you issue bonus shares. You cannot say bank account debit. Why we cannot say bank account debit? Because when we issue bonus shares, bonus share means that it is we are issuing at free of cost. So if we are issuing at free of cost, obviously we cannot debit to bank account because we are not receiving any amount for it. So we cannot debit to bank account. So which account should be debited here? If I cannot debit to bank account, then which account should be debited here? So there are various reserves that we can utilize for bonus shares. We'll discuss about it later. But here I'm discussing about the CRR. This CRR account can be this CRR account can be utilized only and only for one purpose, and that purpose is for the purpose of what bonus share. So this CRR account can be utilized only for the purpose of what? Only for the purpose of bonus shares. So what happen is that if we utilize only for the for the for the purpose of bonus share, it means that when I will issue the bonus share, I will credit to equity share capital account, but I will not debit here bank account because we are not receiving any amount here. So which account will debit here? We will debit here CRR account. Which account will be debited here? CRR account because this CRR account utilized only and only. For the purpose of bonus shares, so some of you may raise an objection, sir. Here we have decreased. Here we have decreased the capital, but you have increased the capital. Yes, I agree. So there is a replacement of capital with the capital. But here you have decreased the capital, but you have not increased the capital here. Here you have decreased the capital. Here you have decreased the capital, but you have not increased the capital here. Yes, I agree because we are not issuing any shares in the market. So company's account. Uh, companies Act Section 68 says that if you are not issuing any shares in the market at the time of buyback, you have to transfer the face value of buyback of share to a CRR account. So we have transferred from free reserve to CRR account. So, but this CRR account, but this CRR account can be utilized only and only for the purpose of bonus shares. So I am not issuing bonus shares today. I am not issuing bonus shares today. These bonus shares will be issued later. Later on, when I will issue the bonus shares in the market, when I will issue the share, um, when I will issue these bonus shares that free of cost share to my existing shareholder, not in the market, to the existing shareholder. So, to the existing shareholder, when I will issue to the existing shareholder, at that time, this CRR account will be converted into equity share capital. Yes, agree. So, there is a replacement of capital here. You have decreased the capital, and here you have increased the capital. So I am replacing capital with capital. The replacement of capital should be capital. But here we are not doing the replacement immediately. This replacement will be happen later. Right now, when we do the buyback of shares out of profit, it means that we have to transfer the face value of buyback of shares to a CRR account. Right now, at the time of buyback, we have not replaced the capital with the capital. We have decreased the capital, but we have not increased the capital. But later on, these CRR. Will be utilized only and only for the purpose of buyback of shares. At that time, I will debit to CRR account. I will utilize this reserve and I will credit to equity share capital account. We cannot say bank account debit here because we are not receiving any amount here. So I will debit to CRR account and I will credit to equity share capital account. So don't you think later on there will be replacement of capital with the capital only? Not today, but later on. So here. Two ways to do the buyback as per the company's act. The first way is that out of fresh, out of fresh issue. Of, first way is out of fresh issue of 
shares. In that case, when we do the buyback out of when we do when we do the buyback of shares, okay, when we do the buyback of shares out of out of uh, um, when we do the buyback of shares out of fresh issue of shares. So in that case, we will issue the shares in the market. It may be issued at par, it may be issued at par, or it may be issued at premium. It may be issued at premium. But remember that the with the amount you have decreased the capital, with the same amount you have to increase the capital. So in second case, what happened? In second case, what happened here? You are out of profit. Out of profit means it means that we are not issuing any shares in the market. If we are not issuing any shares in the market. The company's account, the company's access, that you have to transfer the face value of buyback of shares to an account which called CRR account. So free, free reserve account, debit capital redemption reserve account. So not today, but later on, this CRR will be converted into equity share capital account. It, this CRR will be converted into equity share capital account only. So when you will convert into the CRR, when we will issue the, when, when, at what time it will convert into equity share capital? When we issue the bonus shares in the market in future. At that time, you will pass entry. CRR account debit, CRR account debit to CRR account debit to equity share capital. Here, CRR account equity share capital. So later on, when you will issue bonus share, that CRR account will be utilized for the purpose of bonus share. At that time, there is a utilization of capital. At that time, there is a utilization of what capital. Okay, so here, here you have decreased the capital and here you will increase the capital when you will pass entry CRR account debit to equity. We have credited here equity share capital account. So CRR account debit to equity share capital account. So there will be increasing capital there. So we have decreased the capital here and then we have increased the capital here. So we have decreased the capital here and then we have increased the capital. The replacement of capital should be with replacement of capital should be with the capital. I hope you understand this point. Okay, so we can do the buyback out of fresh issue of shares and out of profit. So what is this section 68 of buyback of share, which talks about the replacement of capital should be with the capital in case of out of fresh issue of shares. So we will pass entry for buyback and then fresh issue of shares. In case of out of profit, we are not issuing any shares in the market, and in that case, we will utilize this freezer. For the purpose of CRR, we will transfer it to CRR and later the CRR will be, if says in the question, that obviously CRR will be utilized only for the one purpose, that is for the bonus shares. So later when we will issue the bonus share, that CRR will be converted into equity share capital. That time it will be a replacement of capital with the capital. So Companies Act says that whenever you do the buyback, no problem, you can do the buyback. But you decrease the capital. But at the same time, there should be increase in capital. So, but if you have decreased the capital by 10 crore, then there should be increase in capital of rupees 10 crore only. So, in case of out of profit, may not be, it is immediately there is increase in capital. Because right now, we are just, we are just creating a CRR account. But later on, this CRR account will be converted into an equity share capital account. So, uh, now you have a break for 10 minutes. And after the break, we will continue this discussion. Okay. So in every chapter, first we will discuss about the concept and then we'll solving question order. This is will there are so many other things I have to discuss. So that we will do after the break of 10 minutes. Okay.